at the time when I launched my cosmetics, uh, the beauty products were very perfect, very minimal, um, really beauty products. But I loved the idea of making an accessory product. I wanted packaging that you couldn't resist, that you would never throw away. I wanted the container to be the same way. And I wanted the product to be very, very high quality. So I loved this whole concept and we really, really have kept to that this whole time. Ever since I was a little girl, I always dreamed about having my own cosmetics line. In fact, I saved all my favorite ads, my favorite containers. Um, I collected them from flea markets. And I always had an idea that someday I would make this product. I wanted a product that you could display on your vanity, something that you would be very proud of. I think that when it came time to designing the cosmetic cases and bottles and containers, we use the, the same idea that we did with the furniture in the boutique. The black lacquer became my signature. And you can see even to today, we're still continuing with the black lacquer. Very Victorian details, um, butterflies, roses, all the icons of the Anna Sui brand. And I think that this is what's made it so popular, that people relate to the butterflies, the roses, um, to the shiny black, or the very cute. Um, designs and I think that everything has become almost collectible. A lot of people buy two, one to use, one to save. From the very beginning the first product that I wanted was red lipstick. In fact I had saved a lipstick that was discontinued and I had just a little tiny bit left and that was what I brought to the first meeting. And the other product that I wear all the time is black eyeliner. So those were the two most important products to myself, plus the nail polish, because I've always worn nail polish, and I always like dark colors. So I think that this was kind of a little bit thinking of myself most of the time, but then also making my favorite products for everyone else to have. The dolly heads were something that I collect. Uh, my favorite designer of dolly heads is Gemma Takagna, who made them in the 60s. And they're made out of paper mache. When I opened my first boutique, I didn't have a lot of money to decorate it. So my friends and I got together, and every weekend we would make these dolly heads. I figured out how to do them with styrofoam heads, newspaper, and paint. And we created these characters, Sally, Marion, etc., for decorating the boutique. It became kind of a symbol, again, an icon of Anna Sui. I loved the fact that we used it for perfume bottle design, we've used it for packaging, and so it's really become so much a part of my world. The product that I always carry in my bag is red lipstick. In fact, it kind of became my signature look. And I have a funny story about it. Um, when I first started coming to Japan, my friend Sofia Coppola was coming to Japan all the time too. And she was filming Lost in Translation. And I was very excited. I came back from dinner very late one evening and she had left me a note, I want you to be in my film. So I ran to where they were filming, got into the elevator where they were filming with uh, Scarlett Johansson. And after we finished filming, I went back to my room and I was so upset. I didn't have any red lipstick on. And I thought, my whole life I've been trying to cultivate this look, and now finally I'm immortalized and I don't have red lipstick on. Well, anyway, I was cut from the movie, so it didn't matter. So it didn't change my image. I think the only rule for wearing makeup is that you have to have fun with it. I think that you can experiment, try different looks. In fact, when I was younger, I tried many looks. Fluorescent, glitter, shiny, uh, pearlescent, you know, everything. Like, I had to try it. But I become kind of used to wearing my black eyeliner and my red lipstick now. But still, from time to time, I'll add glitter. I'll add a different shine. Um, I think that why not have fun with it? When I think about cosmetics, I want to put my world into the cosmetic. Not everyone has a lifestyle where they can wear an Anna Sui dress. Maybe they don't have budget for an Anna Sui dress, or 
nowhere to go wearing an Anna Sui dress. So I want to put the same fantasy, the same amount of thought, and the same amount of design into every product that I do. So I think that that's my job, to make every tube of lipstick as exciting as an Anna Sui dress. First of all, I can't believe it's been 20 years. It's just flown by. It's been so much fun. There's been so many uh, very, very exciting products that we've, we've produced. But I think that means so much to me is the fact that I've had such a strong following. I've had so many loyal fans. I've had people that just love my product. People that say to me, the first lipstick I ever wore was Anna Sui. The first blush that I ever wore was Anna Sui. I mean, that means so much to me. And I think that this continues. Like, I get so excited when I see a, a new customer coming, discovering Anna Sui, getting that same thrill that I've been trying to give for the last 20 years. I think everyone always says that I'm very curious. I always love to learn about new things. I love to research it. I love to learn everything about it. And in fact, I have the perfect job because designing a collection, you need to inspire yourself and then you need to get everyone else excited about it. So you never know where your next idea is going to come from. So I love to travel. I love to see art exhibits. I love books, movies. You just never know. Like, it could be one thing in a movie that suddenly will give you an idea. So I try to always search and always continually inspire myself in order to get everyone else very excited. When I was a kid, I saw a movie with a princess that had a purple Rolls Royce. Well, actually, it was lavender. And I thought, oh my God, this color is so beautiful. It's cooler than pink. So lavender became my color. That birthday, I even asked my mother, can you make me a cake with lavender roses? Can you make me a dress with lavender flowers? And I think that it's always been my signature color since then. I don't know if I have a favorite place. I love discovering new places, but I also like going back to old places. I think maybe I've been to London the most um, in my life as far as travel, but that's because I love the flea market there, I love the museums there, and the exhibitions. Um, but I think that that's part of what I do. Like I love going to a new city and finding out if there is a flea market, because that's where you find the stuff, the things that people had from the past, the things that people collected. And that really interests me. I'm kind of a citizen of the world. It could be Tahiti, it could be Egypt, it could be Russia, it could be even, I went to Nashville, Tennessee recently. It was so exciting to see the Country Western Museum. I, I just love discovering new things, seeing new things, and learning about them. What I love about coming to Japan is that there's so much tradition, so much culture, but also it's the most high-tech place in the world. So I love that contrast. I love the contrast of the kimono and the Harajuku girl. Um, I love seeing the very, very um, ritualistic uh, ways of serving food. But then there's restaurants where you just use your credit card before you can even enter, pick everything, on, like on, almost computerized, and then when you walk in, you get served. So I think it's that contrast that I find so exciting about coming to Japan. I think when people talk about Anna Sui, they always use the same catchwords. It's very feminine, but trendy, very rock and roll style, but nostalgic. Um, there's also the quality of like good girl, bad girl. Sometimes you can't tell the difference. It's very flirty. Um, but then there's maybe kind of a sexiness underneath. Um, I like that. I like the contrast. I like the um, questioning. And I think that people always think of my fashion that way. I think Anna Sui fashion is not an age. It's a spirit. In fact, my mother wears my clothes. My nieces wear my clothes. I wear my clothes. 
I think it's really people that love fashion, that love new ideas, love femininity, love dressing up. Um, I think all these things are part of what uh, makes the Anna Sweet customer. I think I'm happiest when I'm with my family and my friends because I work a lot and I'm alone a lot and I spend a lot of time questioning and sketching and thinking about the designs. So when I have leisure time, I like being with family and friends. But another thing that makes me very happy is when I meet a customer and she tells me, I have this dress that I bought 10 years ago and when I wear it, my husband tells me I'm beautiful. You can't ask for a better compliment. You know, I'm so lucky that I can do what I love and what I dreamed about doing. Um, but, you know, of course, it's been difficult through all these years. There's been challenges. But I think I love a challenge. I love to see if I can figure it out, see if I can uh, produce that, that idea that I have in my head. So I'm very, very fortunate to be able to be doing this. And I think that this is what I want to continue doing for the rest of my life. So I think that that's why I always say to people, you have to live your dream. One of my favorite museums in London is the Fashion and Textile Museum. It was originally owned by Zandra Rhodes, one of my idols, and I always went to see exhibitions there. In fact, I went to see an exhibition a few years ago and it was about a designer, Thea Porter, who I knew nothing about. But by the ex end of the exhibition, I thought, oh, now I understand her theory, her whole life. And it was just such a great feeling to like be able to learn so much throughout the exhibition. When I was leaving, I stopped in the gift shop and I was looking at the book. And the director of the museum came over to me and asked me if I wanted to have coffee with her. So we sat down and had coffee. And by the end of the conversation, she said, would you like to have an exhibition here? And it was such a surprise because I never thought about th that I would be able to have an exhibition in London, uh, which has been such an inspiration for me. So it was quite an honor and a thrill. And that's how it all happened. In my work, we're always looking forward. We're always um, meeting deadlines. We're always working on the next collection. We're, all, we're very rarely ever looking back. And in fact, when we started working on this exhibition, we had to go through boxes and boxes of things to remind us of things that we had done in the past, the invitations, um, the inspirations. And my assistant Thomas and I, we just couldn't stop talking about all the, all the things that we had done through all the years. And I think that it was very rewarding to see how much work we had accomplished, um, how much we had created. And it's a rare time to be able to reflect on that. So it was very nostalgic and very, very um, rewarding to be able to reflect on that. I'm so proud to bring the world of Anna Sui to Tokyo. These last 20 years have been so wonderful. I've met so many great people, and we've done so many beautiful products together. We've had very, very nice presentations, but there's been nothing like this for Tokyo, for my, my fans, for my customers, and for people that, that don't even know about Anna Sui. I think that they're going to discover a lot. Um, it'll be nostalgic for a lot of people, and I, I hope that everyone enjoys it as much as we have been enjoying it, putting it together. So I hope that you come and meet me, come and enjoy my world, and I'm just so thrilled to be showing in Tokyo.